first started reviewing N64 games, my goal was to find the best of the best. But as I've learned, you can't really appreciate greatness and you can't really appreciate the best of the best without context. This game is that context. It's Arrow Fighters Assault. Hell yeah! Arrow Fighters Assault. This is a game. Developed by Paradigm Entertainment and released for the N64 on October 30th, 1997, Arrow Fighters Assault is another attempt at bringing that awesome arcade feel to a console. Did it succeed? Probably not. After all, four years after the game released, its publisher, Video System, filed for bankruptcy. Ain't that great? Buckle up, because I have a lot to say. So before we really start, I should probably give you the context of the game. I should probably share the story so you have a clue about what's going on. Yeah. That's something that I should definitely do, because it would be unfair to do this review without giving you that kind of context. This game doesn't do a very good job at telling its story and relies almost entirely on the manual. That, that's kind of what the joke is. That's, that, that's what the joke is. I've come to accept this within 64 games, sort of, but I do appreciate a little bit more effort. And speaking of effort, there was none put into the manual. Let's just read it word for word as I die a little on the inside. Here's the manual. It's real. Let's do this. Futa Morgana is on the attack once again. This powerful and notoriously cruel military organization won't stop until it has conquered the world. A month ago, Futa Morgana exploded a special heat generating bomb in the Antarctic. As a result, major seaboard cities including Tokyo and New York have been flooded by the melting Antarctic ice. At the same time, ugh, okay, that's one. Yeah, that's that's fair. It's fair. It's still it, we get it, we know, we know what it's saying, we know what it's saying. Futa Morgana's forces have begun their long-awaited doomsday invasion. The world is in chaos, fearful of this demonic crisis. What's more, Futa Morgana has totally immobilized the world's ground units. Naval forces, meanwhile, are occupied with saving huge numbers of refugee. It's one refugee, but it's a huge number of refugee. It's a big refugee. BIG REFUGEE! The only hope is Operation Project Blue. I mean, I, okay, so that's not really a grammar, it's not really an error, but uh, it doesn't sound right. It's their only hope. I don't know, it's, oof, whatever. Project Blue is the code name of a peacekeeping force organized by the United Nations to maintain world harmony. Over the years, Project Blue's elite team of aero fighters have faced Fuda Morgana on numerous occasions. Comma, Capital B, but without a doubt, <coughs> someone got paid to write this. But without a doubt, this is the most critical battle in its history, for the lives of millions are at stake. Shortly before your first mission against Fuda Morgana, the UN Secretary General meets personally with you and the rest of the Aerofighter Squadron. We can't rely on support from the other units, he says. The entire future of our world is in your hands. Now it's up to you to scramble with the Arrow Fighters and set out on the most dangerous and important mission of your lives. Good luck. We're gonna scramble. Okay, well, that was a trip. So how are the graphics and general presentation? The game starts off with a, well, a pretty boring opening sequence. It kind of sets a bad tone for the game. However, the rest of the game is better, but that's not saying much. The rest of the game is very... Eh. The backgrounds are sort of just one solid color with some haze over it. Now, this makes sense to some degree because you're flying around in the sky, and there's not much that you can do, but still. One reason why I feel there are disappointing visuals and backgrounds is because the first level actually has some nice detail to it. Then you compare this level with almost every level after that, and it all feels flat out uninspired. This presentation is just lackluster. Even the back of the box looks sad. Yeah, these will sell your games. The, the, the These are happy pictures. So, I don't want this review to be entirely negative, and I'll give Arrow Fighters Assault credit where it's due. That credit? The planes. They look awesome and are fairly unique except for F-14B and F-15J, which look generally the same. They all have their own kind of personality, not just the planes, but even the pilots. They all have their own unique look, which does a good job at showing off their character. The characters themselves are all pretty cliche, but their traits still shine through character design. Also, one of them is a dolphin. Just, uh... Just think about that. I think that makes this game worth playing for just that reason. Do you need another reason? I don't. So yeah, the characters and planes look pretty cool. 
Too bad the rest of the game looks like absolute shit. The frame rate is equal to that of a toaster, and yes, that doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't have to. Just look at this. And it's not like the game is rendering out a whole hell of a lot, unless for some reason all of this crap on the screen is slowing the game down. <laughs> it's so distracting. Look, it's nice for realism and stuff, but I never found myself going, okay, how fast am I going? Oh, it's good that I have this to tell me, and what about my elevation? Oh, good, now I know. No. When I'm playing the game, I'm fixated on my radar and looking for the boss. That's it. This is not necessary. It's an example of less is more. There's not much else that I can say about the graphics besides I like the models of the planes and such, but the frame rate, this distraction, and all of nothing to look at really hurts the game visually. It's a lot better than the music, which is extremely forgettable. Now, music is entirely subjective, but I can't help but feel like there was little to no effort put into the music. The only real notable track is the menu theme, and even that is only okay. There's a lot of bass used in the music, and as much as I love bass, you can't just throw in a good bass track and hope that that makes your piece good. I'm not saying that the music is bad, because it's alright, but once again, Again, music is entirely subjective, and I think that this music is simply forgettable. One positive thing to note about the music is that it does fit the game. It has sort of that Top Gun feel, and there's points to give it for that. This game is just missing the sexual tension. It also has quite the quantity of tracks, but with that said, the tracks are pretty damn short. And one big problem with the music overall is that almost all other sounds take priority over it. The game isn't mixed very well, so you don't hear the music. The other noises for the game are pretty much stock noises, which is exactly what you'd expect, so I can't really fault it for that. I just wish that it was mixed better for multiple reasons, like a big issue that I have with this game is that it just doesn't give you feedback. The only weapons that feel great to use are the ones that lock on, one reason being that you're pretty sure that they'll hit, and another reason is that you can clearly hear them smash into your enemies. You can't really tell if you hit your opponents with anything else, and at many times I couldn't tell if I was getting hit. I could look down at my health, but I think if the planes were more animated, or if the sound was better mixed, then maybe it'd make it easier to give the player feedback. I feel by the time that I realized that I got hit, I've already turned off the game and gone to bed. You actually get two control schemes. Novice is alright and controls almost exactly how you'd expect this game would, and normal is damn near uncontrolled controllable at first. You move with the control stick, Z is to shoot your weak weapons, A is to shoot rockets, B is to use a defensive weapon, and R is a special weapon. Up C gives you a boost, down C is to break, and left and right C are used to make turning easier. L is to change the camera view, and no, no, absolutely not. And the D-pad is to give you sort of a cinematic view. This works overall, so I have no real issue with the button mapping. Although I never quite got a hang of defensive weapons. As far as actual movement goes for the novice control scheme, I just wish that turning was easier. If there was a fast turn, I would be so happy. And even though you can just use the right and left C's to turn faster, it doesn't help much. This wouldn't be an issue so much, but the way that this game is designed, it makes it very apparent. The other control scheme, normal, takes a lot more to get used to. The most notable part about this control scheme is that you can just move all around. When you push right on the control stick with the novice control scheme, you turn right slowly. But when you push right on the control stick with the normal control scheme, you spin. The normal control scheme is not new user friendly at all. However, once you play it for a while and get used to it, then it's a lot more viable to use. With as much control that it gives you, it's definitely the preferred method. If you enjoy torturing yourself, stupid wimbly wambly control scheme, you make me sad and angry. Sangry. Yeah. In general, there are three types of levels. There is search and destroy, defending something, and landing your plane. Yes, there is literally one level where you just land your plane. An entire level dedicated to it. No enemies. No struggle. You just land your plane. Why? What's the point? The search and destroy missions are the most abundant, and they're kind of the reason that this game just doesn't do it for me. They could pretty much be boiled down to just boss fights. You find the boss, you defeat the boss, you win. There's no build up either, because you could pretty much go straight to the boss. And then the boss fights usually consist of just shoot the boss, fly past the boss, turn around and shoot the boss, and rinse, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat, it's not fun. Some bosses can be destroyed easily with well-aimed attacks, but then I have to ask about what's the point of the rest of the level? Other enemies hardly come into play, so everything but the boss is practically pointless. I feel like these would have been superior if you had to destroy smaller enemies first to eventually draw out the boss, but that's not what we got. The levels where you have to protect a specific object are actually fun. They keep you busy, and instead of shoot a thing, then turn around and shoot again, you pretty much go in circles and land to whoever you see. It's at the very least more interesting than the other kinds of missions, but that said, it's still not great. And then of of course, there's the landing mission. Which is a real thing that should not exist. Okay, let's not let our emotions get the better of us free. The planes are pretty cool. Not only do they look cool, but they're great to play in. Each one of them is pretty distinct and they offer different kinds of weapons, like regular missiles, bombs, a giant blast of heat, and shurikens. I shit you not. I couldn't really find a plane that I preferred, but I did notice that Hien could take out enemies really easily with his giant laser. Is this supposed to be realistic or balls to the walls crazy? I can't really tell 
but remember there's a dolphin. I wanted to talk about the different bosses, but there's honestly not much to say. They're all essentially the same with aesthetic differences. Some move, some don't, some attack you, and some rely on their fleet to do their dirty work. In the second mission, you take on two massive ships, which serve as one boss, and that's pretty cool, but there's not a lot to note about them necessarily. And that said, there's not much else to say about the bosses other than that this is definitely a Zelda ripoff. And this background reminds me of a certain other big boss fight where you're in a plane. Huh. Okay, so that's the main game, but what about the bonus modes? What about two-player? Does it maybe redeem the game? No! But, but, it's, but it's not all that bad. In a, in a sense. Two player is pretty simple. You and a friend, or an enemy, go head to head in a death match, which is pretty much just a timed dogfight. You pick one of three stages, how long you want to fight, how many special weapons you are allotted, your defense, which fighter you want to use, and what control settings you'll use. This mode pretty much suffers from the same problems as other games with a similar mode. You spend a lot of time just looking for your friend, and once you find them, you only see them for maybe a second. And much like other modes in these kind of games, it's shoot, then turn around, and shoot more, if you can find them. And the last bonus mode to know is boss attack, which is where you can pick and choose the bosses that you want to fight so long as you've taken them on in the main mode. It's pretty much a practice mode for the main game, except it doesn't have all the extra enemies flying around, so yeah, it's alright. If you really like one particular boss, then you can go back and fight them, but other than that, in practice, I don't really see the point. Overall, would I suggest this game? Yes, but not because it's good. I actually recommend playing it because it's eh. I feel like we should play all sorts of games, good, average, or bad, just like this one. This game right here, it's not good at all, but you should play it. I'm not saying that this game is special by any means because you should play all games, all of them. So play Arrow Fighters Assault, or don't. I won't ever again. So there we go, Aerofatos Assault. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you're not mad at me or anything for my review. Maybe next time I'll review a good game. Or I won't. I probably won't. Leave me suggestions for good and bad games to review, and you know what? You have a good day. Or night, or morning. I don't, I don't know when you're watching this. I don't, I don't have control over that. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video and want to check out more of my singular reviews, then I recommend checking out my review of Dr. Mario 64. People seem to have really enjoyed that one. But if that's not your style, then maybe check out my Super Mario Bros. 3 vs. Super Mario World video. It's pretty dope-tacular if I do say so myself. Once again, thanks for watching. Until next time.